but in this video we're going to uh, kind of cover how to construct a group frequency distribution, not so much what it is, but as, as much as make one, okay? So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, notice I have an example of here, it says construct a group frequency distribution for the following data that represent the record high temperatures for each of the 50 states, okay? So, you, and also use seven classes, what we're interested in doing. Whoops, wrong tool. So, uh, a couple things. First of all, you'll notice here that our, our raw data has been organized into this row column type of, you know, uh, configuration here where we have 10 columns and five rows, 50 total states. I just want to bring that up because it's a good way to keep track of your data when you're recording it. But if we want to uh, create a group frequency distribution, I've outlined the process down here. And the first thing we want to do is determine our classes. Recall that a frequency distribution, uh, the very first things that we list here, we have a column here we call as column A. These are class limits, okay? So class limits. And then the very next column, our column B here, is our class boundaries, okay? And so class limits and class boundaries are heavily related to one another. But what I can tell you is we're going to have to develop our class limits before we do anything. So, um, if that's our first step, let's talk about what it is our ambition to do here. Basically, we need to take all of this data over here and split it up into evenly spaced uh, numerical neighborhoods uh, that cover all of the data. So I think the first thing we want to start with is this. What do we need to cover? What's our minimum? What's our maximum temperature? So it seems to me the lowest I can see here is, is 100 degrees. I don't see anything lower than three digits. So 100 degrees must be our minimum. Okay, so we're going to give this a name. We're going to call it the min. We're going to look for our maximum datum here. So let's see, I see 122. If I can find anything bigger than 122, we'll cross it off and circle it. So let's see, 122. Well, we've got a tie right here, 122. Uh, ooh, 134. So 122 is off the, out of the mix here. Actually, we'll just uncircle them here. Uh, 134. And it looks like that is our maximum here. So we say max. Uh, what we want to do is we want to find the range of the data. Okay, so we're going to start with this. It says first determine the range of the data and then divide by the desired number of classes. So let's start with this. We say the range. Okay, so we have a range. Let me write this down here. Sorry. Range is equal to capital R, and we always call this like the max minus the min. You'll also see it represented this way. We say capital M minus lowercase m uh, for max and min but essentially the range. We want to calculate this first. And so, since we have a range this time of 134 uh, minus 100, of course, we have a range of 34. So essentially our data spans 34 degrees worth of you know, temperature. Since we want seven classes, what we need to do is we need to figure out you know, how wide should each class be so that we go from 100 to up to 134 evenly spaced um, <clears throat> but cover seven different classes, say. Uh, what we need to do is we're going to take the range and we're going to divide by the desired number of classes. So, you know, you see on our, our step one here, we say R over desired number of classes. In this case, since we want seven classes, what we're going to do is we're going to take that 34, we're going to divide by seven. And so in this case, we say uh, width. Width uh, is equal to 34 divided by seven classes is approximately... Uh, we had a calculator value about 4.86-ish, okay, so 4.86-ish degrees. Uh, the rule of thumb here is always round up to nearest hole, okay? So we're always going to round this up because imagine this, if you rounded it down, it's, it's like saying right now, to cover 34 units worth of length in seven classes, you would need exactly 4.86 degrees in each class. If you rounded down and you only gave each class a width of 4, you, you would start at 100, but you wouldn't get up to 134 in 7 classes. So to round up is always to make sure you at least go past, okay? So we're going to call our class width, we're going to call this 5 in this case, okay? So when you construct this and you get your limits first, let's start with this. We understand that we're starting at 100. We have a class width of 5, okay? Or at least we need a class width of 5. Now the important thing to note here is that uh, 100 plus 5 is indeed 105, but we actually want five elements in our first class. Remember 100 up to 104, that's 100, 101, 102, 103, 104. That's five data, okay? Uh, another thing we could do here is this. Instead of filling out that 104 <clears throat> right here up front, let me get some things out of the way here. Instead of filling out the 104 up front, we, we could add you know, five to this and get our next lower class limit. So 105 plus another five here would be 110. We say 115 plus another five, 120 plus another five, 125, and then 130. And I'm going to stop at 130 because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven classes. 
So in order to get the upper class limits, the nice thing about these is uh, you could just say it's one less than the lower class limit for the next class. So since this starts at 105, this one's going to end in 104, and this will be a 109. Okay, so it's 104 on the first one, 109. This would be 114. We have 119, 124, 129. And then 134. And you notice that actually we reached this beautifully up to 134. And so the next thing we need to do is just come up with our class boundaries. But again, just recall that to get your class boundaries, what we do is we just we take a half off the last digit uh, on this figure here. So we say this would be like 99 and a half, 99 and a half. And then we tack a half on to the upper class limit. So this would be 104 and a half. And the thing with uh, class boundaries is that. This is 99 and a half degrees up to, but not including 104 and a half degrees. That 104 and a half degrees is included as the beginning of the next class, or the the lower class boundary for the second class. Okay, so 104 and a half up to, and you say, well, what would this be here? Well, it'd be a half more than this 109 here. So we say 109 and a half. And so each class would start with. You know, the next class always starts with the upper class limit of the previous class. Okay, so we could just do this here all day, you know, all day long, all the way down this. Um, I'm actually going to deviate from this, and we'll create a, a you know frequency distribution in the next video. But we just wanted to say what's the process for doing this. So this is the the process up front. Uh, the next things we need to do are step two. We say tally the data. So we'd go through, and we'd see how many of each datum fit in each category here. And so we put our tally column here. And we go through and we say things like, well, you know, 112 degrees, where does that fit? Well, you know, I'm looking at this and it fits in this third class here. So we put a tally for 112. We go cross it off. And we say, well, 100 degrees. Well, 100 degrees fits in between 100 and 104. So we put a tally here for this and we cross it off. You know, and I'm not going to go all the way through this in order, but like 105. 105 would fit in the second class. 105 up to 109. So we put a tally here. And what you start to see is, <coughs> you, you start to get this tally count here, and, and the only reason I'm not actually doing this is because we're gonna, I've already got it constructed, we'll go take a look at it over here. Uh, but just showing you how you come up with your tallies in the first place, you basically go through and you, you put each datum into the class it fits in, you, you go for a tally there, because the next thing we're going to do is number three here is find the frequency. And so we say this is column D, and we call this frequency. Uh, it's often abbreviated just lowercase f. Uh, but frequency, and so let's say, you know, I have these things here, I'd say, well, two, three, and two. Of course, these aren't actually what I have, I was just looking at those right there. But basically, you add up all the tallies for each class, so like, you, you can see that all the temperatures have already been sorted in here into these class limits and boundaries and tallied, and, free, you know, we got the frequency of each one. Uh, but basically, you can see that, mo you know, most high temperatures are somewhere between 110 and 114. You know, we can draw that conclusion right up front. Or, or that, you know, we'd say most temperatures are probably anywhere between 105 uh, up to 119 degrees, probably in here somewhere. And you can see this reflected with these frequencies that are a little bit higher than normal. We could even include this 7 here. <clears throat> okay, uh, so the last thing we need to do is find the cumulative frequency. And again, okay, so cumulative frequency, it's a running count of the frequencies of each class plus the frequencies of the classes that come before or preceded. Okay, so it's like a, it's, it's like a total frequencies up until now kind of count. So when you look at this frequency distribution, essentially it's like saying, well, in the first class, you know, in states that had temperatures that were the highest temperature between 100 and 104, there were two of them. And so we'd say, well, up until now, I've counted two states. But, you know, once you get up to the second class here, we say there were eight states that indeed had high temperatures between 105 and 109 degrees. But up until now, I've counted up 10 total things. So we'd say, really, this cumulative frequency here is really the frequency of this class plus all the frequencies before it. And so we'd say, well, how am I getting this 28? Well, 28 is the 18 for this class here plus the 10 that I've counted up until now in this 8 and this two or the thing before it. So the cumulative frequency, a quicker way to do it is kind of just say, well, you know, if I wanted to get uh, the next 41 here, I would take the 13 from now plus the 28 from that I've counted up until now, I get 41. Or to get this 48 here, I'd say, well, take the 41 from the last one here plus another seven, I get 48. But you'll notice that it adds up to a total of 15. We've referred to this before as N, or this just stands for number, but number of what? Number of data that we had, and we had data for all 50 states. So, you know, what conclusions can we draw? Kind of what we already mentioned, but most states have uh, temperatures, high temperatures that fall within this range here. And so if you fall out here on the sides, you know, you're kind of unusual. So, cheers.